I've got a little trick I'm going to show you with an old cereal box, which I'm pretty sure you probably have in your kitchen, and a ballpoint pen, which I undoubtedly is maybe laying around the house. So that if you don't have a lot of art material and you're sort of feeling like I want to draw something, we're going to do it with this. I'm Miss Therese. Welcome to Art with Miss Therese, and um, we're going to get started. So here's a box of cereal that obviously somebody has eaten everything. Uh, nothing new in my house. And I got to thinking the other day, wouldn't it be kind of fun to do some um, drawing on cardboard with a good old fashioned ballpoint pen. So I, the, obviously the top's already taken apart. I'm gonna take the bottom part here apart. And if you are a little nervous about using scissors, you can get a grown up or, or somebody a little bit older to help you. But all I'm gonna do is cut, being very careful, I'm just gonna cut the box. I'll cut this way and then I'll flip it. I'll cut part way through and then I'll cut through the other side, which kind of makes it like a little bit easier. And kind of pull this thing apart. And look, we have a wonderful drawing surface. And I might take it apart just a little bit further. So and I'll do that same trip trick that I did before, where I cut part way in and then switch it and then finish cutting the other way in. And I kind of not exactly even and that's okay. I think I'll just work with this one for right now. I think I'll trim it up like this. And there's some other things we can do with cereal boxes which we're gonna do a little bit later. So if you have them lying around home, you might want to think about saving them. And so we'll have something for other projects. And the other thing is you might come up with, that's the best part, you might come up with your own project. So I'm just going to use this for drawing practice and ballpoint pens are kind of fun to draw with because they have a different kind of a kind of an effect. So one of the things um, that, that you can do with a ballpoint pen is yeah. you can make really feathery thin lines like this. Now this could be grass like that, okay, or we could do something kind of fun with it. What if I did, did something like this and I went like this? And I went like this, and I raised those eyebrows, did a little bit of nose, and an O, and some ears. And there is kind of a surprise guy with his hair up in the air. Just sort of a little cartoon thing, and just something kind of fun. You could do your own cartoons like this, but this is just sort of a suggestion. Might work on the ear a little bit, like this. Uh, if we wanted to do something else with this, say I wanted to do, um, uh, say, say I was going to do a cat, and so let's do like a little, little cat nose there, okay, and some cat eyes there, and they have those beautiful, differently shaped pupils. The pupils are almost almond shaped sometimes, where ours are round. There's the top of the head, some ears, some ears there. And again, this is just kind of a little cartoon cat, like that. There's this little chin. And then you do, the, do those little dots where their whiskers come out. But what's fun with this is the whiskers, look at how the ballpoint pen makes whiskers. I just think it's really kind of cool. It's kind of a way where they start out a little bit thick and then they get thin. We'll do a few little whiskers up here because sometimes cats have those little whiskers up there. And then I might just sketch in a little bit like this. And again, that's, it's just like a little cartoon there, but that's just something to kind of think about there. Another thing we could do, I'm going to turn my paper. And again, no border on this. You can if you want. I'm just having fun practicing with my ballpoint pen. What if I did a line like this? You can get a ruler if you wanted. And I did another line like this, parallel, right underneath it. And another one like that, right underneath it. And maybe one here, like this. And I did another line that curves like this. It's a little bit smaller there. And then I, see this point here? Moved it over just a little bit and had it keep getting a little bit wider. Move it over a little bit like that, like that. So now it almost looks like, looks like a road going over a bunch of hills. It's kind of a fun way to sort of sneak in a little bit of perspective. The closer things get to you, the bigger they're gonna be. 
the further they are, the smaller they're going to be. And then I'm turning my paper here and I'm just going to do just a little bit of shading back and forth like I did with my pencil. The difference with a pencil is you can press hard and let up. With a ballpoint pen, you can kind of do the same thing. It's going to give you like a little bit different effect. So there's kind of like a little ribbon or a road sort of going rolling over, rolling over those hills. It's just kind of a fun sort of tricky thing to do. And here's another one. I was kind of thinking, what if we did a shape like this? I'm going to put two lines kind of apart like this, all right? And then I'm going to put two more lines that are kind of coming together like this. Same up here. All right. And then I'm going to connect those two there. Those two there. So now I've got a little bit kind of an oval shape. And then, I think a lot of you guys are going to kind of figure this out. I'm going to do four little bumps on the side here. And do four more bumps on the side there. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of given me a little bit of a different effect. Again, it's it's just cereal box cardboard and a ballpoint pen. And I'm going to add one more up here and one more there. So I've got a total of one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see, I'm going to, and this isn't entirely accurate, but it's going to be kind of fun. I think some of you might know what I'm starting to put together here. You've seen them at the ocean or in the store if you like to eat them. Their eyes are on little stalks. It's a crab. And their eyes are pretty interesting. The eyes that are on those little stalks have tons of little cells. And within each of those cells, there's actually a little lens. And they can, crabs don't see like we do. We think, we've never talked to a crab, so who knows, but this is what the scientists say. And, um, uh, but they can sense light and dark and color and movement. And that's how they can find their food. We're gonna do like some little feelers. They've got their little, almost like antennas, like little feelers that are there. Some crabs have more. And then, being a crustacean means that they're like an insect. Their skeleton is on the outside. So these are going to be the crab legs with the joints. And notice I'm just kind of bringing them out. I'm just kind of building this. This is kind of a kind of a fun little technique where I just sort of I'm kind of using like building blocks to make my crab. And there's plenty of, of time for you guys to practice doing something like this. So just take your, take your time. The first couple times you do it, it may not turn out how you like it, but try again. Lots of times when I go to draw something for the first time, I can just tell you I am not happy with it. So I try again. So there's, there's your crab, eight legs, two claws, eyes, and some antennas. And then I might put a few little barnacles on it. Maybe this is a little bit of an older crab. It's kind of been under the, in the ocean for a really long time, with those little barnacles. And I don't know if you remember, but in, we did um, some shading using like little dots before in one of those drawing techniques. So, cause crab, crabs have kind of a texture that's sort of kind of pebbly lots of times. So pick your shape to kind of indicate that. So I'm just gonna do a little shading Using, using my little tiny dots. Now the pencil ones, we, we could drop it down like that, but this one, ballpoint pen works a little bit better if you actually kind of come in and sort of draw those little bumps. You can make the, bu the bumps a little bit denser towards the, towards the joint, add a little 3D to it. A lot of what we're doing is just sort of Kind of experimenting sometimes, seeing what the materials, what we can do with the materials. I'll show you something else we can do for shading with this.
This is the crab. I can still keep putting more uh, little tiny dots on it, but hopefully it kind of turned out where it's got a little bit of three dimension to it. It looks kind of crabby. Um, you don't have to use like a cereal box like this. You can use any kind of cardboard box that's, that's in your kitchen, but just make sure you ask your mom or who's ever in charge of the kitchen before you start cutting up things because they may need it for a container or your mom or your dad or somebody might want the recipe that's on the back of it. So just make sure that you ask. Um, you know what else I could put here too? I could do maybe a few little ribbons of seaweed, maybe kind of underneath the crab like this, just to sort of add like a little bit of dimension to it. Let's see, put a little crease down that one like this one. This is that sort of long seaweed that I always love the way it smells of the ocean when it's just fresh out of the ocean. And I'm just going to do a little bit of those scribbly lines like we did before with a pencil, just to give it a little bit of body, like that. Kind of fun. You can always sort of keep adding to it. <laughs> We've done it before. Sometimes I get started on these things and I do not seem to be able to stop. When my dad, my dad was an illustrator and he he was, he was always telling me, he'd say, sis, you got to stop. Don't wreck it. If it. Once it's good, it's good. So kind of keep that in mind. More, maybe, maybe not better. And just as another little hint that we're kind of around the ocean, I'm going to do a little scallop shell like that. There's a little shell shape with the, with the uh, edge of the shell or where the hinge is. And then these are the grooves. Oops, I'm going to do them kind of, whoop, ballpoint pen. I'm going to do them kind of light. You know, one thing you've got to watch with a ballpoint pen, and this is a perfect example, if there's a little bit of oil or grease, it sometimes can sort of put a stop on the pen. So just kind of work it. And might add a few of those little dots on this, like that. Maybe just a little bit of shading, like this. And I'm sure you're going to come up with your own, your own design. But there's an, oh, you know what else we could do too, if you wanted. You could sort of have some fun with this. You could cut this out like this, all right, and kind of give, instead of a square shape around the drawing, what if you went around it? These are big old kitchen shears. You might have some easier scissors, but I was just using what was available. And That might be something kind of fun. Look at that shape now. Just, just a little bit kind of more interesting. I know you can't see the background. Let me take a piece of paper here. That's one of my practicing ones. And, and so it kind of comes out that way. You could glue it on a piece of paper. You could put it up on your refrigerator. You could use it as a coaster for putting um, a glass of water on. You never know. Well, I ran out of cardboard, so I had to raid my kitchen and we were almost done with hot cocoa mix, which reminds me, boy, I sure would like, hey, you know what? Do you remember the last video we did with the ellipse or the oval? Look at this. We are, we're looking at just what we just, what we just drew. That's kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to chop this up. And this one's a little bit easier because it's not quite as big. It's always fun to have my dogs around when I'm drawing because I like the company and they always do something sort of funny and um, they're just they're just good to have around right brisket okay so I was back in my kitchen and this is I use these for lots of things and I'll, uh, we're gonna be using them in another video too but this is like a tuna fish can and I just take the label off wash it so it doesn't smell like fish but if I ever need to make a perfect circle, look what I can do. I just take the tuna fish can or any can in your, in your uh, kitchen or glass and you can come up with a perfect circle. So this could be a planet. It could be an eyeball. And here's another thing we can do. I don't know if you remember, but in a previous video we did, I know this is a little bit small, but we did, we took an eight and we turned it into a spider. It's always easy to remember. Eight legs, two, four on each side, and two, two body parts. It's an arachnid. But I was thinking, what about how to 
draw a spider web. And I thought, gosh, what's, what better thing it would be more perfect than like, like a ballpoint pen because it's kind of wispy. So you do a line down like this, you do a vertical line, you do a horizontal line, and then you do a diagonal line. You can get a ruler if you want, but not necessary. Spiders don't use them, I don't think. And you could add another diagonal line if you want to make it pretty fancy and kind of complicated. And we're going to make a web for that spider like this. I'm kind of bend it a little bit like, like spiders sometimes do. And I'm going to start here and very lightly just jump from line to line with a little dip in between. So I'm sort of, I'm kind of being the spider here, weaving my web. And then it goes above like that. So it's kind of an easy way to draw a spider web. It looks pretty complicated. But once you kind of figure out little tricks on how to do these things, it really kind of makes it fun. And I'm kind of spacing things out because that's kind of how spiders do. I love it in the morning when their spider webs are out and I'm doing my chores and there's dew or water droplets on the, on the spider web. It almost looks like diamonds. Oops, must have hit a little grease spot there, like we said. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's just something kind of fun to sort of kind of fool around with a little bit. And every time, whoops, every time that you pick up a pen or a pencil or a brush or a color crayon, you're going to get even better, even more skilled at it. So there's like a little spider web. I could take this, draw another one, and put a spider in there if I wanted to. So there you go. So we've had a little bit of fun, or at least I have, uh, with a pair of scissors from the kitchen and uh, a couple of old cereal boxes, a hot chocolate box, and I had some fun doing some different techniques and uh, we did kind of like that could either be hair or grass but it turned into hair with a guy that's a little bit surprised and it worked on like like a little bit of how you make a, an expression on a face and we'll do more of that later and cat whiskers and then a fun kind of little perspective drawing and then we got a little more complicated with a crustacean with a crab and a little shell and some seaweed and practicing using dots to kind of define things and give a little bit of dimension. And then I cut it out just for fun to see what we could do with it. And last but not least, we kind of reviewed that spider we'd done before made out of an eight. And then we learned how to do a really quick little spider web. So I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed all this. And um, let me get the brisket. I think she kind of looks uh, even bigger than the last time. She's a uh, half Pyrenees and half catalog and um, uh, is a little bit too cute for her own business, right? So uh, you take care and I look forward to seeing you next time.